This video is going to be a film study look at Marcus Peters and how he's playing uh, for the Las Vegas Raiders. Of course, he's a, he's an Oakland guy uh, in terms of he was a coach's son. His father, you know, was a high school coach in the Oakland area. The Raiders are in Las Vegas now, but Marcus Peters apparently has said that he's always felt like a Raider. It's tough to hear as a Ravens fan, to be honest with you, but this is a guy who's just always operated at a different beat than other corners. I love his style. Uh, he moved on from Baltimore last season. I suspect that he wanted to come back to Baltimore for whatever reason. The Ravens chose not to retain him. Things seem to be working out on both ends. I'm glad for that. Uh, we're going to look at, I think, about 14 plays of him through four weeks of the season. He's a totally unique player for me. I'm always going to root for Marcus Peters. I feel like he's a guy who's setting quarterbacks up, trying to leave space intentionally for them to throw the football. And in some cases, maybe that skews my evaluation because uh, guys are open and I'm explaining it or thinking or wanting it to be a situation where Marcus Peters is intentionally leaving a little bit more space. So I'm going to show you a significant number of plays and you can feel free to make the evaluations yourself. I'm gonna, I intentionally picked this play first. Marcus Peters on the left side. This is Calvin Austin. This is a third and seven, week three against the Steelers, and he's beat badly. I mean, this is one of the things I felt like last year up in this press coverage up on the line of scrimmage. He didn't have the long speed to deal with some of these quicker receivers, and you can see with no safety help over the top, it's over. 74 or 73-yard touchdown to Calvin Austin, a big moment, and I intentionally chose to start that one with that play because I wanted to get the worst stuff out of the way because the rest of it looks pretty damn good, if you ask me. If you're a uh, Ravens fan, excuse me, if you're a Raiders fan and you've uh, watched every game and paid attention to Marcus Peters intently, feel free to let me know how, how accurate I am. So he's completely physical. This is against George Pickens. There is never going to be any back down at all in Marcus Peters. He's always going to compete. I reflect on him not playing in 2021 for the Ravens and Jamar Chase just kind of going off against the Ravens twice. And the moment he stepped foot on the field in week five against Jamar Chase, there was a different level of physicality. There was a different level of expectation in terms of how much you're going to have to compete to make these type of catches against him. Still Steelers film from week three. He plays against the run at times. He does not have the reputation of being a great tackler, but he is disruptive. And that seems to be the case so far here in 2023. I think he had two tackles for loss in this game against the Steelers. He's always been brilliant at this. Let me just come up to the line. I think Marcus Peters is a guy who studies film intently. And just because of the amount of plays he's participated in the NFL, recognizes patterns and understands rather than line up up here, let me come on up here late because I see, I think what he sees is this alignment right here which is a wing alignment, but it's inside between the tight end and the tackle. And I believe, I have no way to prove it, but I believe Marcus Peters recognizes it. As a run concept comes down, he'll get a free tackle for loss along with other guys. He's got another one in this game. Second and 10, I think this is going to be complete to Allen Robinson um, to his side. He's got a zone mentality. He's, his reputation is as a, as a man corner. My apologies, that completion was to the slot, not to the number one receiver. But he's got a reputation as a man corner, and he was really, really adept at playing man and then cheating off of that during the season. You can very clear – or during the play, excuse me. You can very clearly see that this is a cover two. There's your Mike linebacker. And in this case, he's trying to stay between these two guys. And there's really just too much space in this I, – I, we used to call it star design. X, whatever you want to call it. There's just too much space against this zone for Marcus Peters to adequately be able to cover both of them and, and remove the possibility of throwing to either receiver, and you get a pretty easy completion um, out into the flats. But what I thought I noticed last year with the Ravens is that his zone mentality was better than I remembered it. And of course, like I said, he didn't play in 2021, uh, played brilliant for the Ravens in 2020, 2019. I think he's gotten better at zone, or maybe he was just always really good at it, but we didn't get opportunities um, to see it. Another tackle for loss. He's up at the top of the screen. This is just what Marcus Peters does. Uh, maybe not every game, but he's a guy who recognizes things. I think pre-snap, he's off screen to our right, by the way. But if you're a Raiders fan, you know he's always on the, he's always on the defense's left-hand side of the screen. Like I said, I'm always going to root for Marcus Peters and probably see more good than others because – a, the career has been amazing, and B, when he's on the field for your defense, I feel like you've, you've always got a chance. Now, he did control, I'll be honest with you, you can, you can check this film out as you wish. He did control the left-hand side of the field against the Bills. I didn't see big plays given up at all. 
a, another example of that zone mentality, him being able to stay between receivers, in this case a tight end and a receiver, and, and break as soon as the ball is thrown. I think he's always looking for opportunities to leave a little bit more space, but this just seems to be up the hash. By, I think that's Davis. Tight end release into the flats on the second and eight. I mean, on the second and eight, it's a brilliant job by the defensive coordinator and by the Raiders guys of giving up a three- or four-yard gain on second and eight. I guess it's actually a two-yard gain. Same concept here against the Bills. Uh, he's just playing this well, funneling the receiver inside and then letting the tight end or H-back, fullback, whatever you want to call him, get out into the flats. But he's doing it in a Marcus Peters way, baseball turning all the way around. I'll show that to you one more time so you can see it. If you're a Raiders fan, and like I said, you've you've watched every game. I have not. I wish I was able to. It's Friday morning, so I've just been able to get to some of the stuff that I really wanted to get to earlier in the week. Let me know what your perception is of how Marcus Peters is playing. I've always seen him as a guy who plays at a different beat, like a, like a jazz musician, somebody who doesn't play on the same beat as everyone else and is kind of thinking ahead. I think he's a great film study guy. I think he's a much better teammate than people give him credit for. I have always loved his passion. I think this is a completion to Davis for 15 yards on his side. It's a nice route by Davis. There are times where I feel like uh, Marcus Peters is able to see three things at once. As a DB, you got to be able to see two. You got to be able to see, you know, the route and the quarterback, presumably, if that's what you're looking at. I've always felt like he's a guy who was looking at, who was able to see three things. I feel like he's oftentimes trying to get a hold of the slots route as well to see if he can cheat off of that. And now that's not actually where the slots run in the route, but that's my whole point is I think Marcus Peters is trying to play in between stuff. And in this case, you know, Josh Allen's got a cannon for an arm, zips this over thing over there, 15 yards for Gabe Davis. Maybe that's one of the weaknesses of, of Marcus Peters is that at times rather than staying as tight to the receiver as he should, He's, he's worried about playing between routes. Now, you could also say, well, Coach, he's also older, and he's worried about giving up too much space and possibly that guy taking it to the post or something like that. That, that possibility could be true, and I'm willing to admit that as he's gotten older last year, 2022, and this year, 2023, um, I've continued to evaluate him as if he's healthy and has the same amount of speed and get off, which he clearly does not, as you saw from the first play against Calvin Austin. Man on digs. And Diggs seemed to be bothered by him on two occasions pre-snap. Was Diggs could be seen before this? This is a touchdown to someone else. It's not against Marks, Marks Peters, obviously. He could be Diggs could be seen pre-snap looking at the ref, like complaining about something before the snap, which is a very rare thing. It seemed like he was complaining about either Marcus Peters being in the neutral zone or something about Marcus Peters' face mask. Maybe he was saying, "Don't let him grab my face mask," but. In any case, I thought he played very well against the Bills. I, I grabbed 30 plays from that game. And if you're a Raiders fan and you you know have a different opinion, or if PFF or somebody graded him differently, you know feel free to let me know. Diggs is in the backfield on this third and short, which I think is revealing. You got, I would say, a pretty poor job by the nickel to to the boundary. Uh, no awareness of Diggs crossing his face at all, and Peters ends up covering the tight end. This is a you know, brilliant usage of digs by the Bills. Let's just be straightforward with it and give them credit. It's a brilliant usage of putting, you know, their best receiver in the backfield. A lot of teams do this, particularly uh, the Detroit Lions do that with Iman Ross and Brown, forcing uh, Peters to deal with the tight end and then letting Diggs operate against a linebacker, or in this case, I think you've got a nickel safety. I'm not sure who that player is, to be honest with you, but really heavy on the quarterback and no awareness of the route crossing his face at all. Just too easy. Uh, the lack of awareness of a running back being in the backfield kind of surprises me with Marcus Peters on the field to that side because I feel like he's someone who's really good at recognizing stuff and communicating it, like I said earlier. Down here to the bottom side of the screen again, covering up uh, Davis. Ends up being an incomplete pass up the right hash by Allen, who's just you know a nightmare to deal with defensively because he can extend plays. Another example of what I'm talking about, Diggs appears to be – motioning to the ref, and Peters is also saying something, uh, which is kind of unusual because normally Peters is going to be talking to the player that he's guarding. Dig, it's quite clearly that this is intentionally just to get to the to the tight end, just to make him available. So Diggs isn't necessarily trying to run a route, but I didn't see Diggs beat Peters. You know, and like I said, I got about 30, I think it was 32 plays from the game that I saved. If you're a Raiders fan and, and he did beat him and I just missed that play, uh, let me know because it wasn't intentional in terms of me just omitting it. 
Cool design to just get, I think that's Kincaid, the rookie tight end, get him open out in the flats. One more time, man on Diggs. And again, you can see Diggs is saying something. I'm not sure what he's saying. What he's trying to communicate. It's going to be a touchdown. I think Robert Spillane kind of gets overextended here. Again, focusing on the quarterback. Pretty good job by Peters so far on this fourth down. Spillane is going to go a little bit too far that way, and I think this is Davis is going to fit back underneath, and Josh Allen just zips it in there. Pretty ridiculous throw. I mean, look at this is the guy he's throwing the football to. Here's Josh Allen, and you can see Spillane is in the way. So not only is Allen moving to his right, he's throwing it across his body to the opposite side of a defender and zips it in there. But let's focus on um, Peters again, who's at the bottom of the screen against Diggs. I think he's playing pretty well. I think he seems he looks like the same guy that we had in 2022. I haven't seen the uh, fiery nature yet, to be honest with you. Two plays from the Chargers game in week four. I haven't seen the fiery nature yet. For those of you that don't know, uh, last year, week four, 2022, Marcus Peters had a situation where he hollered at our head coach, uh, John Harbaugh, because John Harbaugh went for it on a fourth and goal late in the fourth quarter. Uh, Justin Herbert is not finished off here on the play, and someone leaves Quentin Johnston alone. Johnston ends up getting a catch from the other side of the field. I think Peters is down here dealing with – uh, number five, this is Johnston who's going to motion across. Let me know what your perception of him is. I don't pay attention to rating service. It was Keenan Allen that motioned across. My apologies. I don't, I don't pay attention to rating services. It's a mesh concept here. I don't really pay attention to him. I look at the film, and there is some margin for error in what I do, clearly, because I'm not watching. I don't watch every snap from every game. If it's a first and 10 and it's a run play, I'm not going to watch what Marcus Peters does. What I do, my procedure is I go and I save usually 60, 80, 90 plays uh, from a period of time for a player, and then I watch them, and I whittle, whittle them down usually in half the first time watching through, just delete them. And then from there, I try to cut it in, cut it in a third again to pick which ones I want to show to people that I think is representative of how he's playing. This is the last one I'll show you. This is what I love about Marcus Peters. There isn't a moment on the field where he's not trying to find space to get the football. And I think this is intentional by him being on the under the outside of uh, Johnston and then cutting underneath. You get the end zone angle of this one too, by the way. Nearly an interception, hits his hands, hits Johnston's hands um, afterwards. I love the player. I'm always rooting on Sundays to see a notification come across the screen. Marcus Peters, 68-yard touchdown or interception return for a touchdown. Haven't seen it yet in a Raiders uniform. I think it'll um, energize the crowd and energize the team. That's what he does. It's what he brought to the Ravens. It's what he brought to the Rams. It's what he brought to the Chiefs as a rookie when I think he had eight turnovers or eight interceptions maybe. Uh, guys, let me know what you think of the video, the film study that I did on Marcus Peters. I want to try to show respect. Don't get an opportunity to do this that often because I do so much Ravens content and now Lions content on top of it. Appreciate your time. If you think other Raiders fans – other Ravens fans as well would appreciate or enjoy this film study content. Look at Marcus Peters. Then please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help this video get more reach.